even earlier today. And oftentimes when I have to prepare for a show like this, we kind of, we take these trips down memory lane because when I'm going over, you know, what I want to say and the thoughts that I want to get out, it starts to remind us of how, when we met the things that stood out to us about one another that let us know that you on the right path. And he was telling me how, a lot of times with, with this modern construct where women are constantly focused on your pockets. Well, how much money does he make? Is he a six figure guy? You know, what does he do for a living? Like they're concerned with all of those external trappings. And he told me that, you know, I know that right now, particularly over the past couple of years, there's been a lot of conversation about women and, and wanting, you know, uh, uh, this high value man and they're being so focused on the money. But he was like, years ago, like when I was courting you, he said, you were the only one who took a genuine interest in who I was and what I did. He said, when I met you, I, I was doing my woodworking and my carpentry and he was doing it on the side as he worked his regular job. He's like, do you, you know how many chicks I dated? They all knew and nobody ever asked, was ever concerned or ever cared. When I said I had to go to the shop, it, it just, it just went right over their head. And I'm just like, okay, they never cared. He said, but you, from the moment that I told you, oh, I got to go to the shop. You were like, oh, what's the shop? You know, just wide eyed and bushy tail. And I was like, well, what, what, what do you do at the shop? And he's like, oh, you know, I'm just making wood stuff. I was like, oh, I'd like to come. He was like, I mean, like, you, you want to come out? You going to come out there? And I was like, yeah, I'll just, I'll come after work. And then change my clothes. Wasn't prepared, just straight from work. I was like, okay, shoot me the address. We, we had, you know, I think we had like the little Garmin GPSs back then. You didn't have it on the phone with the turn by turn. You, you needed to know where you were going. And y'all, his, his shop was at his brother's house. And it was just so many turns. I was like, I'm lost. He was like, no, you're just keep making all those turns. And I pulled up and I, you know, hop out of my little, we called it the green ghost. My little Camry that was smoking every time you accelerated, you know, you just coughed. You just act like you didn't see it. I was you know, I was 25 and just doing my thing. And I showed up to the shop and I get out the car and uh, I'm like, Ooh, you know, look, I was impressed. It was all this equipment. I didn't know what this equipment did. And I'm asking questions. I'm going, well, what, well, what does this piece right here do? So what, what do you do with this? And oh, okay. So you push the wood through this and oh, so that's how you put the pocket holes in. I am genuinely inquisitive. I am just, I'm just enamored. I'm like, you make stuff. Like you take just wood and you turn it into things. You guys, I had no idea the, the, the level of impact that this was making during the course of this courtship. He was, he was just the fine dude that I saw in the club. And I was like, I'm trying to get to know him. Now, yes, I was, I was without Christ. So obviously I wanted to know him, but I wanted to know him. Who is this man? What is he about? What makes him tick? What is that thing that gives him that sparkle in his eye that brings him joy? What, what is he good at? I wanted to learn all about it. And y'all, I was there and this was, this was in the fall because we met in October. So this, this may have been like November ish. And it's, it starts getting a little chilly and he's like, are you cold? Mm, I'm not cold. No, I'm not cold. You know, the, this little space heater is just fine. I'm sitting there. Wood is flying everywhere. He's like, you, you're not gonna put a mask on. At that point it was too late. I had inhaled so much sawdust. Throat was on fire. But I was like, you know what? It's fine. I, I later regret that because the next day I couldn't swallow. And I was, I was, there was so much phlegm. Like my body was literally, I was coughing up. You could see the sawdust. And he was like, I am so sorry. He was like, yeah, I, I was trying to tell you, you know, to put the mask on, but you was just so off into it. 
I'm, I'm picking up wood and I'm slinging it over my shoulder and I'm, you know, I'm just off into it. And he told me this morning, he was like, you know, I'm in, I'm in Lowe's. And he said, I noticed something. He said, I'm here in Lowe's and there's this Hispanic guy, you know, kind of short. And he's, he's got all this wood that he's picking up. And he was like, you know who was there with him? His Maria. We don't know if that's her name. We're just going to call him his Maria. Maria was right there, her, her little self. Just, she helping him load this wood up. She pushing. They were doing it together. And I told Robert, I said, you know what I realized? They're not exposed to this American culture this Instagram life where everything has to be about the money and the prestige and the glam. I said, one, all they have is each other because there's probably a language barrier. She don't know the language. He don't know the language. One of them have to decide who's going to learn this language faster so we can survive. And she's just right there. She's just right there being a devoted family builder. That is the messaging that I am going to start bringing to you guys. I, I want to be the one, the next time I have to address this topic, I'm going to provide the solution to the problem of the Arachitan. Yes, I needed a whole show to, I needed to tear them a new one because they needed it. They needed to feel the pain and the shame of their behavior. And you guys needed to have it exposed in raw authenticity so you can see just how bad it really is out here. And I haven't, I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of this topic. And I don't, I don't want to rush it. It is, it is going to take some time, but at minimum tonight, I needed to unpack the villains. I needed to unpack the villains because one of the main reasons why I started this podcast was because I didn't want to just talk about these issues. It's, talking about it is easy. I could talk all day about the foolishness in the culture, but rather I want to play an integral part in providing a viable and attainable solution. You guys, my conscience is held captive to the word of God. And, and while I have this platform for however the long the Lord allows, I am committed to discipling women, particularly younger ones who are ready. Y'all like, I am ready to abandon this foolishness and I want to do something different because I've tried it the other way and the path that I was on, it wasn't taking me anywhere. I was going nowhere fast. You guys, some of the women out there who end up listening to this message, the, the solutions that I intend to provide in the weeks ahead it's simply not for some of them. Some of them, they're just not for them. It is, it is not what they want. It is not who they are, or at least not in their current state. And that is okay. It, it, it's perfectly fine because in order for me to abandon the reckless road that I was on, something had to happen to me. I, I had to change. I didn't come out the womb being wise and wanting to be a devoted family builder. You guys, I was on the Arachitan spectrum. I was there. I talked about the Arachitan behavior of me wanting to fight a whole grown man just because I disagreed with him. Or thinking that abortion was a viable option to, to limit your exposure to an unwanted child. My mind was corrupted. I was not wise. I was foolish. I was sinful. I was wicked. I was demoralized. You guys, I, I had to abandon what I knew and the way that I thought was right in my own eyes. And I had to embrace something else. So we're going to talk about it. But tonight, we're definitely, we're, we're, we're not going to talk about it right now, but we are definitely going to talk about it.
Because the change that has to happen, you can't do this by yourself. You are not meant, you cannot walk this path alone because you, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. For those of you, particularly if you are a new convert, you need a roadmap. You need a roadmap that is guided by scripture where scripture is the compass and you need other godly women who have walked down this path, who have built their own families, not just by the sweat of their brow, but by the power and conviction and the leading of the Holy Spirit. I see in so many of you, you are ready for this, your mind, the Lord is already renewing your mind and he is shaping your worldview and you are abandoning the shallow and the silly and you are picking up new tools. I see it. I've met some of you. I see the genuine desire of your heart for you to recognize I'm moving forward. We, we not, we not, we're not going to focus on what happened back there. We're going to lay it down at the foot of the cross. And we're going to move forward, but it requires a change must happen. And this is even to the women who you're like, I already know who I am in Christ, but truth be told, I don't know what I'm out here doing. I haven't a clue what I'm supposed to be looking for. The woman that I should be, I've adopted some of Lucifer's language and the ways that the culture views being a wife and being a mother and and, and just viewing relationships. My mind has to be renewed. I am so ready to walk alongside you and pray with you and, 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 and study to see what do the scriptures teach about this? And there are going to be times on that journey. It's going to hurt a little bit. It's kind of like when you when you go into an old house and you're like, we're going to rehab the house and you go in for the first time and it's cobwebs everywhere and you duck in and you like, because, you know, the, the cobwebs are in your face and the floorboards are cracking and it's dust everywhere and they left an old rug down. And you, you start patting the rug and shaking it out. And now you're coughing because it's, it's dust everywhere. It gets worse before it gets better. That's what we want. We want the dust up. We want the coughing and the hacking. We want you, sometimes you're going to have to run out the house to catch some, some fresh air. And then you're going to come back in because it's going to be a little cleaner than it was before. And you may have to run out the house again. Just, just to breathe a little bit and just to... Because there's, there's going to be times on the journey where your deeply held presuppositions are going to be challenged, but you are going to come out refined like pure gold. And I am here for all of it.